Okay, let's talk about everyone's favorite number, and of course that is pi. And it's represented by this little symbol right there. Okay, pretty much uh, the majority of people, I would say 99% of people out there have seen this symbol, but that is uh, pi, and it represents approximately this number 3.14. Okay, it's probably the most famous number in mathematics, the history of mathematics, and it's probably right up there in terms of its uh, the most impact it has on math. So it's an extremely important uh, number in mathematics, and it's used, of course, in geometry, uh, trigonometry. It's just used everywhere. But what I want to ask you is why is this around 3.14? Have you ever wondered why pi is uh, around 3.14? Now, notice I'm being very careful here to say that pi is not totally equal to 3.14. There's a reason why I'm saying that, okay? Pi is not equal to uh, 3.14 and only uh, 3.14, and I'm going to talk about this in a second. But uh, if you think you know why pi is uh, around 3.14, put your answer into the comment section. I've actually done some videos on this before, but um, anyways, I kind of like to bring this up from time to time because I just don't think enough people really understand or appreciate uh, pi, and it's not that difficult uh, to understand why it's around 3.14. Of course, I'm going to explain this in just one second, but first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video, but uh, basically, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra to pre-calculus and everything in between. So if you're at the middle school or high school or even college level in terms of mathematics, I can help you excel in your math courses. Now, if you're taking any test that has math on it, for example, the GED, SAT, ACT, uh, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, ACUPLACE, or ALEX exam, CLEP exam, uh, end of course exam, teacher certification exam, a nursing school entrance exam. I can go on and on and on. Uh, you get the idea. There's a ton of exams out there that have math on them. Very, very important to people's uh, uh, goals and their career aspirations. So I can help you prepare and pass those various exams. If you homeschool, I have an outstanding homeschool math program. Hopefully you will check that out. And if you don't have any math notes, don't panic. Uh, you can use mine. I'm going to leave links to my math notes in the description of this video. But uh, basically, um, if you don't know how important math notes are, I'm going to tell you right now, this is probably the number one most critical activity you can be doing as a math student to be successful in math. Uh, Note-taking is so underestimated by students. They just kind of like write a little bit here, write a little bit there. I'm telling you right now, if you want to be great in math and get great math grades, take great math notes. So start doing that, uh, and you can thank me later. All right, so let's get into why pi is approximately 3.14, not totally equal to 3.14. And I'm going to explain that here in a second, but let's just get why it's around 3.14. So to do that, we're going to take a look at some circles. Okay, so uh, pi has to do with circles. All right, that's the, the first thing that we want to know. So the value of this uh, variable, pi, is related to circles. So you can see here I have three circles. And uh, the yellow line here is the diameter, okay? So that's the diameter. The diameter is just the width of the circle. Now, if basically, it's the widest part of the circle. Now, I wouldn't measure the diameter like over here. That's not the widest part of the circle, right? So the diameter always goes through the center of the circle, okay? So there is a center of the circle. And uh, right from here, the center out right there, we call that the radius, Okay, just to get some bonus information in here. So that would be the radius. Now, imagine if you were to, like, draw a circle. I don't know if you ever used a compass, okay, but this is really a great uh, instrument. So it kind of looks like this, and you have, like, a little pencil down here, like so. And then this part is really uh, sharp. And then on your paper, you keep this... Um, that sharp point right there, and then you twist this around, right? So your pencil goes around like so, and basically you know, that uh, part of the compass is the center, and this distance from that pointy part that's staying stationary out to your uh, pencil right there, that's the radius, okay? And you kind of form that circle. So that's a good illustration of how to construct this circle. So just remember, 
you know, that there's a difference between the radius and the diameter. The, the diameter is twice the radius. So let's just focus in on the diameter. Okay, so that is the whole entire width of the circle and it goes to the center. All right, now there's another aspect of a circle that we want to kind of uh, talk about here, and that is the distance around the circle. Okay, the distance around the circle it's kind of like the perimeter of the circle. If I was to kind of measure around, if I got a string and I went around this circle and around this circle and around this circle, then I kind of laid out that string. Uh, that would be called, that's called the circumference. Okay, so the circumference is the kind of the perimeter or the distance around the circle. If you start right here and you go around this way, that's the circumference. Okay, so now the big moment has arrived. We can actually talk about where pi it's constructed. So pi is this number that shows up when we take the circumference of a circle, the distance around a circle, we just take that and divide it by the diameter, we get this number around 3.14, okay? Now, uh, here in a small circle, if I had the circumference I divided by the diameter, I would get around 3.14. But circles are proportional, okay? So here, let's medium circle, if I took uh, its circumference and divided by its diameter, guess what? I would get around 3.14. I would get approximately uh, 3.14. If I took the big gigantic circle over here and I took the, its circumference and I divided by the diameter, same thing. I'm going to get that same uh, decimal, 3.14. Now it goes on and on and on. And let's talk about why 3.4 isn't the exact uh, version of it. Before I do that, Let's just kind of stop and pause here. Pi, okay, is no more than the circumference of a circle divided by the diameter. That is where we get pi from, okay? That's where we get this 3.14. Now, let's go down here and talk about uh, pi. It's approximately 3.14. Uh, not, it's not equal to 3.14. Now, this is very, very important. So when we take the circumference and we divide it by the diameter, we start getting a decimal, 3.14. But actually, if we actually had the exact circumference and the exact diameter, this decimal would continue to go on and on and on and on. And it doesn't repeat and it doesn't terminate. Okay, This is what we call an irrational number. All right? So these digits just are like random digits. Now, there are people that can memorize pi out to even, there, there are some like Guinness Book of World Records, I think there's people that can even go out to like a thousand digits, which is crazy, right? So it's kind of like a sport. Um, and you might think I'm exaggerating. I am not exaggerating. There are people uh, that, you know, competitively uh, remember the digits of pi, okay? And they all celebrate uh, Pi Day 3.14, which is March 14th. Uh, the people who love this number will have a big party. And celebrate. But listen, pi is a tremendously important uh, number in mathematics. But here's the thing don't feel compelled to have to uh, memorize all these digits. What I need you to understand is that this, okay, is a non repeating, okay, it's non repeating and a non, non terminating decimal. So it's just random digits after random digits that there's no rhyme or reason. So you have to literally go out to infinity to write this entire uh, decimal. So obviously that's not really practical. So we just assign a variable to it. Okay, so we're going to say, you know what, we're not going to write all this. We're going to write this symbol. And this symbol pi uh, represents the exact, okay, all the way out to infinity, that exact value, which is approximately... 3.14, okay, approximately, or um, from a fractional standpoint, 22 sevenths, okay? So when we're using 3.14 or 22 sevenths, we are to actually perform calculations with pi, like finding the area of a circle or a circumference, we're going to have approximations if we use a decimal approximation like 3.14 or a fractional approximation like 22 sevenths for pi. But just know when you write that uh, um, variable, I'm sorry, that symbol pi, it represents all of these decimals, okay? And again, this is an irrational number. It doesn't repeat. These decimals don't repeat, and they don't terminate. Don't feel compelled that you have to memorize 
all these digits, okay? Uh, a couple of quick details about pi. You should be able to pull up pi on your calculator. Just so you're used to it. So look on your scientific calculator, graphing calculator. You should find a button. If you have a more basic calculator, you're probably not going to be able to find it. But uh, definitely on a scientific calculator, you can bring up um, a good amount of decimals for pi in your window, okay? So if you want a more accurate decimal uh, uh, equivalency, or decimal version, approximation, excuse me, decimal approximation of pi, go ahead and do that. Just remember, if you use 3.14, that is, your answer is not going to be as accurate if you use 3.14 and you continue on with all the digits that you can see in your calculator. So if you use all of these digits, your answer is going to be more accurate. If you use this, it's going to be less accurate. Okay, so just keep that in mind as well. Okay, so hopefully now this has answered the great mystery uh, that you've probably been thinking about for years and years and years. Why is pi around 3.14? Okay, so if you ever uh, were wondering that, hopefully this little video did a good job explaining that. And if you knew this, by the way, I must go ahead and give you a nice little happy face, a check mark, and an A plus for just being awesome at math today. But uh, if you didn't know that and now you're like, oh, now I know this, I understand this, go ahead and think about smashing that like button. That definitely helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, hopefully you'll consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus math videos, basic to advanced math. So my goal is really to try to teach math in a clear and understandable way. So if you like my teaching style, please take advantage of all the videos that I've uh, already posted, and I'm going to be posting a ton more videos. I'm never going to run out of math to teach. Okay, again, I do stuff from arithmetic to calculus. I just love teaching math, but my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.